Right, so this week we're going to make a video on how I use Ink Inkscape for using the laser cutter and then transferring the files from Inkscape to uh, K40 Whisperer, which is what the program I use for interacting with my laser cutter. Okay, so we're going to make like a little place map thing with an infinity symbol on it to stay on brand. And normally you would you would look for an image or draw your own. Um, I tend to look for images on here. Um, if you're going to try and make money off it, it's important that you uh, you use the usage rights and either use free to share and use commercially or use public domain stuff. You've got to make sure you pick the right one. Um, to get around this entirely, um, because I'm using a YouTube channel and want to use music on it periodically and avoid copyright strikes and to maintain a channel running, um, I use Infanto and so, uh, but it comes with not just stock music, it comes with video and graphics and stuff. So I quite often use their, uh, images to do things. So this is the one. I've picked up and so I've taken this, I've downloaded it into here and then I've imported into Inkscape the um, Adobe Illustrator version of it and then I can manipulate it and turn it into a thing. So, right, this is Inkscape and I've already got the elements ready to go, uh, just for speed's sake. But uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut a uh, placement out out of a piece of wood. Or I would like to if I was near a laser cutter. So, but to do that, you need a red line. Red lines always mean that you are going to cut. And to do that, you need to the red. It has to be. It has to be. Or you go into your stroke color, and it has to be two five five color of red and green and blue channels have to be at zero and the alpha is up at 255 as well um, if it's not this it will only engrave it and so because we're doing a line it's the stroke we're cutting out so we do that and then that's like the main that's how that's how to cut things out whatever you you color in red it will cut out um, these little blue lines, the vertical and horizontal ones, are just guides so that I can place things where I want them to be. So don't worry about those, those aren't counted. This blue line, however, which is supposed to be 255, is my little border for the design we're going to put in. And so I'm just going to pop that in there and use the arrow keys to make sure it's centered. And I'm aware that it's not symmetrical. Um, but so this blue line, which is the 255 color, is a vector engrave. So it means the laser will go over it and it'll follow the line as it goes over. It will trace out that line. And that's good for text or borders or whatever. And it's a lot quicker than doing a raster engrave, which is the next one. So the next one is raster engrave, and it is any color that is not blue 255 or red 255. Um, and so I tend to use black as my color of choice, uh, but you literally can be any color. And sometimes when you're printing these out and you end up not having this set right. You'll be like, oh, it's doing it, doing it wrong. So this is the little design and the raster engrave will print it out like a standard inkjet printer where the, the laser head will go backwards and forwards, left to right and engrave the pattern as it goes. And big areas like this, it can get a little rough inside there but 
it's still really handy for doing images if you're doing that if you can vary the power of your laser as you're as you're cutting or whatever and but yeah it's it, it's really quite as simple as that really it's just getting the colors right for it um, another so this is our image ready to go but you'll notice i've got it set on an a4 page because that's how inkscape likes to boot up for me and so what you need to do is you need to open document properties and this will help make sure that you've got the right size so for the k40 laser which is what i use the width is 300 millimeters and the height is 200 millimeters it's slightly different but this is the size i work for and that is the bed size so when you import it into it has your your drawing has to fit in this this size otherwise it won't fit in the laser cutter um, so but you can put it anywhere in here if you want um, so but if you do this make sure that the thing you're making fits into that bed size of your laser cutter and then what you can do is you can go to resize page to content and hit this and it will shrink it right down and the reason we do that is that it now makes the document this size and in k40 whisperer we'll be able to move it around as needed if we want it to sit over a particular piece of material so now we've got it like this we will save this same as because i've already saved it just in case and we save it as a svg file and in a logo mat so we'll save that and yeah i know replace so that's our design save so we can now go over to here into k40 whisperer and click open design file and then try and remember where i saved it because i don't hopefully it's in recent recent yes there we go blah, blah, blah. and it's buried deep within the computer somewhere anyway so in k40 whisper you'll notice that you've got this light gray box and this is the bed area that you'll be able to work and the gray dot up in the top left is where the laser head so its home is and so we're not connected to the laser cutter at the minute so we can't initialize the laser but you'll notice that the document has opened as, a, as that uh, document size that we shrunk down to fit around the, the thing we're making. And that enables us to move it anywhere within this gray box. And it snaps back if it's outside of the box. Whereas if you left it the full 300 by 200, you'd be limited to how much you can actually move that box around because the white area would be so much bigger. Right, and so when it comes to cutting this out, you can run these uh, vector cuts and engraves uh, one at a time, as long as you don't move the material. Um, and they're in the order you should use them. So you should do your raster engraving, then your vector graving, then your vector cutting, which is cutting along the red line. Um, or the other thing that I prefer to do is go into settings and advanced settings. And it's got these two here, which means you can group the engraved tasks. So it will do the, the program will do the raster engrave and then do the vector engrave automatically. There's no having to stop it and hit go again. And then if you click this again, it will do it, it joins all three together. And so you, as long as you program these to how your laser cutter works, you can just hit go and then come back and find, find raster vector engraved parts already cut out, ready to go. And that's it. And at some point I will print this out, uh, but it's not going to be today because I'm not near the printer. So if you found this interesting, then please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. And hopefully we will get back to some regular content in the near future. Uh, but I'll see you next week.